Good morning, Greg Garcia here at the Angler's All Fly Tying Studio. Today I'm going to be tying a 20-incher, a Colorado pattern of a stonefly. It's been around since the early 70s. It was really hard to get any type of history about who was the originator, but I have no doubts it went back before any of the tires here. So it has a great profile to it, great little stonefly pattern that uh, I hope you will enjoy and we'll throw a few little tricks in there to uh, kind of continue our flight time quests. So please enjoy. Okay, well let's get started on this. <clears throat> so we're going to do a 200R hook today. This is a size 10 and you could probably tie these in 10, oh, I'd probably say 12s, 10s, 8s, maybe even a 6 if you'd like. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do is get uh, some, some lead wire. This is a point Two zero zero to 20 basically and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply about 15 wraps of this wire. I think what's really neat about this fly is that it doesn't have a big heavy or kind of obtrusive bead on the front. Just nice, clean, simple, but it'll be just as heavy as any tungsten fly out there. Now for the thorax, I'm going to put some 0 .025, and I'm going to probably wrap in about four to five wraps here. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Then break that off. Easy way to break it is just Kind of like you're doing a wire, just helicopter it until it snaps. And what I like to do where these two butt together is I'm just going to hold my fingernail right on top of it. And then there we go. Have enough room for my head, enough room to apply a tail on the back side. Thread we're working with today is some Dansville 6 aught And what I'm going to do is just start to make sure I have enough for the head. I'm going to start my thread in the back. Leave this tag for the moment. I'm going to bring my thread through all this wire. Then I'm going to apply another little dam right up at the front. Then with this tag, basically I'm going to lay it on my side of the hook, tie it in, and then bring it back alongside the far side of the hook. <clears throat> and what that does is it keeps from my thread creating a little aneurysm through this wire. What I'm going to do is to quickly put a little thread base on here. Just kind of get that secure, start to form the shape of this body. And I'll tighten my vice up a little bit. Then at this point, I'm going to drop my thread where it's right above the barb of the hook. I'm going to grab a couple of goose biots for the tail. These stoneflies have really pronounced two tails, and the biots are perfect for that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pose the curvature of these. Just 
Sometimes if they're giving you a little problem, just cut this little back end off. Nothing to hang up back there. Then I can close those and then even them up. I'm just kind of eyeballing this here, just making sure those tips are even. And then I'm going to take a measurement that I want these to be about half the length of the body. So using my fingernail right there, I can see that those tips come right back, at least halfway back. And then I'm just going to grab those with my material hand, lay them right on top of the hook, a little bit to the side. and. If you have trouble mounting biots, here's a little trick. I'm going to do three, four soft wraps, then I'm going to tighten, and then I'm going to go right back to my tie-in point, which is right above the barb of the hook to make sure it's nice and tight. And there's my two split tails. You don't really have to put a ball of dubbing or anything in there to accomplish that. And I can cut these little wings off. And at this point, I do a little bit more maintenance on this body. It's kind of important to get this all covered up with thread for a couple of our next steps here. It's pretty good. I'm going to do a little bit more here in a moment. For the ribbing, we use a little Unifloss. And this is in a beige. I'm just going to wrap that underneath my thread, pull it around. And then I'm going to tie this in underneath the hook. Gonna go right back to the tail. That tooth, that floss, by tying it in on the side, that's gonna hold in a lot of this wire as well. Lead wire, I should say. Then we're just gonna leave this thread hanging right by the tail. I'm gonna grab my Tiemco the bar pliers and I'm going to come into this wire and I'm going to flatten it out because stoneflies have a very flat body and this is going to represent that and that this body is going to be have a little bit more of appearance of flat versus round. And you can see that. And you can see how it, now it's nice and flat. All right, come up about 75% point up on the hook. I'm gonna grab three to four pieces of peacock curl. I'm gonna re-grab my scissors, even up those tips. Do a wrap, pull those back. I'm going to just tie this bunch right on the top of the hook, go back to the tail, and back up to about the 75% point of this fly. And now I'm going to wrap my peacock curl forward. Should do it. I always go a little further than I need to because I'm going to tie back onto that body so I don't have any gaps or between the thorax and the abdomen. And then another thing I'll do is I could just wrap this floss, but what will happen is it'll be a little bit too wide. So I want to narrow it up. So I'm just going to grab a pair of my hackle pliers, just like that. Then I'm going to grab a shepherd's hook. I'm going to put this right 
back here and I'm going to twist this to twist up this floss. So if that's out of the view of the camera, I'm basically just twisting this to tighten this floss up. It's kind of a neat little technique. You can use that for a lot of different things. Since we're working with a little peacock curl, I am going to counter wrap this. This will just make this a little bit more durable. I'm going to shoot for, you know, four to five wraps of ribbing. This fifth one you won't even see because it's going to be covered by a wing case. I'm going to tie that in and then I'll pull it back. Counter wrap, you don't want that to come unspun. That's it. A little shepherd's hook and a, these round hackle pliers are a great little tool. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is take a slip of turkey tail. What I mean by a slip is I'm going to punch my scissors through some of these fibers and I'm just going to cut this at a right angle. I want the shiny side of this up, so I'm going to turn that over. I'm just going to tie that in just like that. As far as how wide do we need, if you go about the width of the gap of the hook, that's kind of a good starting point. Always like to square that up. I can lay that right on top of the hook. Tie that in. And like I said, I'm going to go back onto that peacock curl or part of the abdomen of the body just so we don't have any gaps in our fly. Okay. The legs for this fly are partridge. And what I've done with this partridge is I've pulled it off the hide and I've pulled out all the fluff on the back side. And I am going to preen these back. Basically what I want to do is have enough fibers that when I tie this in by the tip and I fold this forward that I have enough fibers that are going to cover this thorax. So I'm just kind of judging that a little less okay because what we ultimately are going to do is this feather is going to be laying in like that once we pull it forward it's a little bit different technique on putting in legs And I think another thing that's kind of important is on this first wrap, I'm going to have a little bit of gap here. So my first wrap of thread is going to be right about where my scissor points are so that when I pull this over, I'm not trapping any fibers forward. Okay, so I'm going to tie that in. And I'm going to tie in another piece because I never think that these legs are quite as heavy as they should be. I've got one little fiber here that's kind of giving me a little trouble, so we'll just get rid of it. Again, I'm measuring this so that that goes from the rear of that wing case to the front of the th thorax. Give yourself a little space on the back side. 
tie that in. I got two slips there. Snip this out right now. Okay. Dubbing. This thorax is hair's ear, which I have cut off of the cheeks of a mask and blended out. So it's nice and soft. It's got the right color. It's really nice light. Dubbing. Nice contrast to the peacock curl. I'm just going to just kind of keep adding this on. Make sure it's nice and tight. A thin little dubbing loop. I may have to do that about two more times. I'm going to run this up. You can see there how nice and flat this thorax is. Looks just like the real stoneflies. Again, key to dubbing is a little bit of dubbing on a lot of thread. You can see this stuff is pretty wispy, nice and soft. And a little goes a long way. Plus if you get it on there really nice and tight with small multi dubbing loops like this, this thorax is going to be super tight and it's not going to come apart. And I'm just going to make this a little bigger than the back side. Like I said, it was going to take about three of those dubbing noodles to accomplish this because I get it on there so darn tight. Come up to the front. Make sure we get all that lead covered up. Maybe just a pinch more right at the head. Okay, so now my thread is right at behind the eye. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this first piece of partridge forward. You can see how my legs are laying there nice and natural. I'm going to do one wrap to two to make sure it's in place. I'm going to pull the second one forward. Then I can pull that back and make sure I get it tied in nice and tight. It's also going to kind of create a natural little ramp for my head here. And then I want to make sure my thread is hanging right at the back of my rear part of that uh, tie-in point here. And I'm going to pull my wing case over do a couple little soft wraps. Kind of tighten up a little bit. Then while my thread is kind of hanging there and compressing these fibers, I can come in here and preen this, this, uh, these legs. Kind of get them back to their natural flow. It's probably not going to matter too much once this is in the water. Everything's going to lay back, but in the middle of the drift, if there's an opportunity for the current to let everything kind of move, they're in a natural point. Plus, I think it looks really nice. Okay, so I have this tied in with two wraps. Now I can just come in here with my scissors those slips off. I'm going to just 
just kind of tease them down, lay down flat on the hook, and now I can have plenty of room to build my head. Got a three, four wrap whip finish, and we are just about done. There we go. Nice and tight. Trim a little excess hair, you can do that. Make sure you don't have any hair in your eye. A little dab of glue never hurts. And there we go. 20 incher, great little stone fly. Works well for trout. Local intel is that it works great for carp, for any of those who want to carp this fly. But uh, nice little heavy, natural looking stone fly. If you're looking for something that doesn't have a big heavy bead on the front, there you go. 20 incher. Please fish it, enjoy. Shout out to everybody that makes these videos possible, Davis James, and then all the crew upstairs that uh, are working hard right now to let us do this. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. If you have any comments on the video, leave those down below. Thank you.